Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I will be doing my final house prediction of the 2020 election. So before we get started, make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel. And first, I have to tell you guys about my friends over at Noble Gold. Now, with so much uncertainty in the financial markets at the moment, you might be worried about what happens to your retirement plans. Well, Noble Gold has the answer. Start a qualifying gold IRA or 401k before the end of November, and Noble Gold is giving away an incredible 24-carat American Gold Eagle coin in a beautiful presentation box. With gold set to take off, there's never been a better time. It's like Black Friday all through November, so go to www.noblegoldinvestments.com and get the special coin offer, but don't hang around. Go to www.noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that's www.noblegoldinvestments.com. So it's very important that we complete this house prediction because we are only several days away from the election, and the House elections are going to happen as well. Now, Republicans probably are not going to take back the House. There's very little chance that they actually could. However, they could potentially make it close, and then in the future election cycles have a better chance to take it back. So we will have to wait and see what happens, but we're going to go state by state. Out of the state of Alabama, nothing there. The state of Alaska, Don Young is getting outraised, and the polls have been relatively close, but he's been in office for many, many years. I do expect him to hold by a lean margin. Out of the state of Arizona, I would expect Tama Halloran to win by a likely margin. However, I do believe that David Schweikert is going to win, but he's going to win by the skin of his teeth. It's going to be extremely narrow. It's a potential upset flip for the Democrats, but I think it's going to hold for David Schweikert at the moment. I think he will underperform Trump based off of a scandal. In Arkansas, I believe French Hill will win by a lean margin. The state of California, there's several seats up for grabs here. I do believe that Mike Garcia is going to hold his seat over Christy Smith. I do believe that TJ Cox is going to lose by a likely margin to David Valadeo. And I do believe that Michelle Steele is going to pick off California's 48th district as well. I think the 39th will be a very close margin, but I think that Young Kim probably is going to fall a little bit short, although that is a sleeper flip for the Republicans. We will have to wait and see out of the state of Colorado. I think we'll leave the map as is in Colorado. Nothing in Connecticut, Delaware. Uh, here we go, the state of Florida. Now, it doesn't really seem like there's a whole lot of potential pickups here. Um, Republicans, I think, will do good in the Miami-Dade area compared to last time. I think there's a shot that Carlos Jimenez has to win. I just can't see it at the moment, but it's very, very possible. Um, that definitely is a localized race. I think that these are going to be two close races that you're going to see in southeastern Florida, and it's very possible that the Republicans can pick them off, but right now it just does not seem very likely at the moment. We'll go now to Georgia. I do expect the Democrats to hold both the 6th and the 7th. Trump is going down to Georgia one last time, presumably mainly for down-ballot races. But as the state gets closer and closer at the presidential level, there's going to be seats at the House level that are going to go the way of the dinosaur for the Republican Party. So there's one seat in Illinois. I do believe that Rodney Davis is going to hold his seat without a lot of problems in Illinois' 13th district. The state of Indiana, I do believe that Victoria Sparks is going to hold Susan Brooks' seat in the state of Indiana. Iowa, a lot of people have been saying Republicans could pick off one of these seats. There hasn't really been any fundraising data or polling that's going to back it up, but we'll have to wait and see. There's a potential seat or two that could flip. It really depends how Trump outperforms statewide at the presidential level, but we'll really just have to wait and see. Now, moving on to the state of Kansas, I do believe that because Steve Watkins was primaried out and now you have Jake LeTurner, he is going to win his election fairly easily, and I don't believe that any of the other seats are really going to flip. Maybe Sharice Davids is going to win by a likely margin, not a safe margin, but that's really about it. As for the state of Kentucky, we'll leave it as is. Uh, Louisiana, nothing there. Maine, I do believe that Golden may be safe, and I think Trump is going to win Maine second, and I think the polling traditionally underestimates Republicans in Maine. I actually do think Collins is in a much better shape than I thought she was in a couple of weeks ago when I did my last Senate prediction, so you're going to have to wait and see when I do my final Senate prediction on November 1st, but Maine second, we're going to leave as likely. It could be safe, though I wouldn't really be shocked if it was um, nothing out of Maryland. 
Uh, nothing out of Massachusetts. The state of Michigan, I do believe the third district is going to stay in Republican hands. Peter Meyer, he's a part of the Meyer family from the Meyer grocery stores. You really can't vote against that if you're from Michigan, especially Grand Rapids. And he's going to get the backing of the Republican establishment, even those who may not be too fond of Donald Trump. I do believe he is going to end up winning, especially because Dems can't even get up in their own internals. I just can't see it. Um, the state of Minnesota, though, I do believe that Minnesota's first is going to hold for Hagedorn, and I also do believe that Minnesota's 7th district is also going to flip into the Republican column. I think even a lot of people within the election mafia understand that Colin Peterson may be done for. He's up against an actual opponent this time, and I think a lot of people understand that uh, he may he may be headed for the exits here. Finally, he's been there for a long time, but he's getting out raised, and a lot of the polls have had the Republican up, and a lot of metrics are favoring the Republicans in Minnesota. So right now, we're going to put that in the lean Republican column. Nothing out of Mississippi or Missouri, I do believe, actually, and Wagner will hold her seat in Missouri's second district. Montana at large, that's going to be a close race. Um, Matt Rosendale, again, pulling a McSally. He lost statewide in 2018. He's running statewide in 2020. I think he's going to win. I think it's going to be narrow. It could actually be a tilt margin, but I do think that is going to hold for the Republican Party. Uh, Nebraska second, same thing. I think that uh, you see Bacon running up against Eastman. Eastman is a Bernie Democrat that's not going to play out well in the Omaha suburbs, which are traditionally more Republican areas there. It's not going to happen this time around. The state of Nevada, I think we're going to leave it as is. New Hampshire, I'm going to go bold here. This is my bold take of the video. I believe that Chris Pappas, he's down in a couple of polls, and those polls have trumped down statewide by eight, which is not going to happen. And Chris Pappas is barely leading some of the polls that have trumped down by even more than that. So I do believe New Hampshire is going to be close at the presidential level, and I do believe that Matt Mowers is going to win in the first district, and Chris Pappas is going to be headed for the exits here. I do believe that is going to be my hot take of the video. You can't really hold me to it because it's a hot take. Um, Van Drew in New Jersey second. This is one I believe the Republicans are going to end up holding in New Jersey second right here. I think we're going to put this as tilt Republican, although it wouldn't shock me if the Democrats picked that off because so much of the polling is not looking too good for Van Drew, but there are a lot of undecideds in those polls. Now, New Mexico second. Talking about oil, talking about fracking, this is one of the biggest oil districts. And Biden's not going to do so well now in this district. Now, keep in mind, Torres Small, yes, she has distanced herself from Biden. But is it going to be enough? Not necessarily. I'm going to put it as tilt Republican. That one was going to be close before. And you know that there's going to be trouble when you have the Democrat trying to distance herself from the Biden-Harris campaign. So now we're going to move on to New York. Now, there are several districts in the state of New York here that are going to be relatively contested, even though New York is not a state that will be contested at the presidential level, similar to California, where there are seats that are up for grabs. So here we go. I do believe that Peter King is going to hold, even if it is narrow. I also believe that Max Rose is going to win by a lean to likely margin over Nicole Maliotakis. A lot of the fundraising, and he's been very good at his ad game, although there has been some recent polling that has him down. I just I personally can't buy it. He's probably going to win. I do believe that Claudia Tenney is going to win New York's 22nd this time around. I think Trump is going to carry her to the finish line. He won the district by 16%, and she is actually running a campaign this time around, which she really didn't last time. Uh, Katko, I think he will hold. I think he'll hold narrowly. Jacobs, it might be might be a lean margin, lean to likely somewhere in there um, for McMurray, who's taking over from Jacobs, actually. So that's it for New York. We'll move on to North Carolina where there really aren't a whole lot of contested races. There's a couple that are going to flip back into the Democratic column here. But uh, North Carolina's 11th. You have the Cawthorn race there. That might be a likely margin. A lot of Republicans, including myself, have attacked Cawthorn for recent stances that he's taken, which kind of run a little bit contrary to his original uh, campaign message. But still, he's probably going to win. It is a very rural district, and the Democrat there just seems a little bit too incompetent for that to happen. Maybe North Carolina's 9th is going to go by a lean margin. But other than that, I think we're going to leave North Carolina as is. North Dakota, that is safe. Ohio, I think Shabbat is probably going to win. I think Trump, again, will carry uh, Shabbat to victory in the state of Ohio. We know how polls in Ohio are at underestimating Republicans historically. 
Now, the state of Oklahoma here, the 5th District, I do believe that the oil factor is going to be a big blow to Kendra Horn, even though she has tried to distance herself from the Biden-Harris campaign. And I do think that Trump is going to win the district. The district-level polling you've seen in recent uh, days here has had Bice over Horn. That's another good sign uh, for Republicans in that state. Um, now, here's Oregon's fourth. This was my hot take of last video. I think it's going to be extremely close. And Scarlatos is a hero. He is a mega chad. He is running in Oregon's fourth. He had the greatest ad of this cycle, in my opinion. But DeFazio, he's been there for a while. I think that maybe Scarlatos will have a better shot in maybe 2022. But as of right now, I think Democrats probably do hold, but it could change. You never know. Now we move on to the state of Pennsylvania here. There are several districts that are up uh, for grabs right now in the state of Pennsylvania. I do believe that Pennsylvania's 10th is going to stay with the Republicans. I also believe that Connor Lamb is going to be in a little bit of trouble with Parnell. I, I think he'll probably hold right now, but we'll have to see. It's my final prediction. I'm trying to pinpoint the accuracy here more than I usually would when it comes to the House races. So we're going to put that as tilt D, but you never know. I don't believe that Joe Cunningham is going to win. I think a lot of people understand that Nancy Mace is a fairly good candidate. I think she's actually going to flip it. Trump won that by 13.1. We know how polling traditionally has been in South Carolina. So I do think Republicans are going to flip that seat um, out of South Dakota. Nothing there. Tennessee, nothing there. Texas, this is where Democrats are going to have some fun with their flips here. I do believe that Fletcher is going to be in a little bit more trouble than a likely margin here. Uh, she's up against Wesley Hunt, a fairly good candidate. I don't know if it's going to be a pickup there. I do believe Democrats are going to have pickups in Texas is a 22nd. So now we go to Utah. The fourth is a seat that I think Owens, Burgess Owens, is going to pick up. His fundraising is catching up a little bit. It's a good sign. I think that Trump is going to win the district by a lot more than he won it by last time because you saw Egg McMuffin uh, kind of eaten to his vote share there. Um, out of the state of Vermont, nothing. Out of the state of Virginia, the fifth district... Riggleman's seat. I think Good is going to have a narrow hold. Last time they said that Riggleman was going to lose in 2018, and the polls are roughly even. I think that, you know, you did see Donald Trump go to the 5th District. He campaigned there. I do think that Bob Good is going to hold the seat for the Republican Party. So Washington, we're going to leave as is. West Virginia, we're going to leave as is. Wisconsin, we're going to leave as is. And that is the end of the map here. So Republicans are going to gain a couple of seats in the House. So here we go. 229 to 206, Republicans are going to gain several seats, and there's potential flips that they could get to 210 with. You look at Texas's 23rd, that is definitely a seat that could be a sleeper flip. You look at Oregon's 4th, that is also a seat that I do believe could be a sleeper flip. If Trump overperforms in Iowa, there could also be a sleeper flip in the mix there. So we'll really just have to wait and see. But I do believe the Republicans are going to gain around four or five seats in the House, maybe more. And I hope that I'm wrong, and I hope that the Republicans gain a little bit more than this. But right now, this is my final map for the House. 229 for the Democrats, 206 for the Republicans. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. Become a member. Donate to the Patreon or subscribe. Star links in description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.